Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of What's New To Goo. I'm your host, Chris To Goo with Alpine. Now, as you saw in the title, we're actually here to talk about a brand new six channel amp from Alpine. This isn't that amp, but I think in order for me to really introduce this amp properly, we need to rewind. We need to rewind to a year ago when we first launched the R-Series amplifier. Now, Alpine's been on a mission to create three distinct lines of sound system products, the S-Series, the R-Series, and the X-Series. The R-Series amplifier was the last piece of that puzzle. We already had a great speaker and sub from R, we just needed that amp. Now this delivered. This amplifier matched in both performance and power for both the R-Series speaker and the R-Series subwoofer. So the only thing that that lineup was missing back then was a multi-channel amp. Basically a consolidated amplifier that can do the job of both a four channel and a monoblock. Now instead of doing another five channel amp, we wanted to be unique. So we decided to do a six channel and not just any six channel, a six channel with staggered power. So in order for me to explain the benefit of six channel staggered power, I gotta explain six channel and five channel. Let's try it right now. Now the five channel and the six channel amp were created for two different reasons. The five channel amp was really a consolidation of a four channel and a mono, basically allowing you to create an entire system, uh, power an entire system with one amplifier, which simplifies the install. The six channel amplifier, six, eight, or 10 multi-channel amplifiers were really created to power a bunch of speakers. So if your car had eight channel, 10 channels, you had a single amp that can power all of them. Now, traditionally, those multi-channel amps, they have the same amount of power on every single channel. So if it was a 75 watt, it would be a 75 watt by six or a, a maybe a 50 watt by eight, or whatever the case is, but, and you can usually bridge them, but when you bridge them, you don't really have enough power to power something big like a subwoofer, like a five channel could. The fifth channel of that five channel amp can actually power a subwoofer. It usually has like 300 watt or even 500 watt. Now, if you can create an amplifier that had the benefits of the six channel amp, but also the power of a five channel amp for that subwoofer, you'd really have a great thing on your hands. And that's what the R-Series amplifier with staggered power can do. Well, now that we got that out of the way, let's check out that amp. Here's the R-A90S. Let's talk some quick specs. The R-A90S is listed at 100 watt by four and 200 watt by two at two ohm and 75 watt by four and 150 watt by two at four ohm. That's a little bit hard to digest. So that essentially gives you a five channel amp that does 75 watt by four plus 500 by one, or you can use it as a six channel that provides 75 watt by four and 150 watt by two. So a really versatile amplifier, uh, and I'm really excited to get this thing open. So let's check it out. This is protected all the way around with this nice bubble wrap, so it can ship very nicely. Um, here's some hardware. Looks like there's the four feet that get mounted to the bottom, just like the previous R-Series amp. There's also two Allen keys here for the terminals on the side of the amp. Um, there's a little door here that you can open to pull out the amplifier. And here's the manual. Uh, so inside these manuals, I don't know if you guys have um, had Alpine amps in the past, but one cool thing about our amps is we actually put in there what we call a birth sheet or a verification certificate. So this certificate actually gives you the actual text measurement when it came off the line. Obviously we have a target spec, which for this particular amplifier was 100 watt by 4 at 2 ohm. It was 75 watt by 4 at 4 ohm. Uh, but at the test, and we tested it at 2 ohm, um, instead of doing 100 watt by 4, it actually did 144 watts by 4. That's 50% more than we actually claim. So this amplifier has a lot of headroom. Um, obviously in this manual we have the standard user manual as well as some warranty information. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Alright, let's take a look at this amp. Uh, really nice finish here. This is a kind of a brushed uh, metal look in the front, aggressive, uh, just like the previous amp was. Um, the thickness here measures in about two inches. Um, the height, the way I'm looking at it, just under 11 inches, and the width is just under 13 inches. That's about four inches longer than the previous amp. Uh, what's cool about the way they extruded this metal plate here, you, you can actually line up the two amps um, together when you're doing the install, so they can kind of flow together. Um, really cool little piece. The uh, logo plate is actually with a temporary adhesive, so you can actually remove it, rotate it, depending on what orientation you want. If you want landscape or, or more horizontal, you can do that. So uh, that's pretty cool. 
Let's take a look at the uh, input side. You guys see that okay? Probably not. I'll fix it in post. So starting from the left, your left, um, is the power input side. You need four gauge wire for that. Uh, next to it is our fusing. The fusing is actually a total of 90 amps of fusing. If you ever want to know how powerful an amp actually is, take a look at the onboard fusing. 90 amps is a lot. Uh, next to that is the input selector. So the inputs are actually balanced and differential. Um, so you can actually do a high level in like speaker direct. You don't need a high to low converter if you don't want to use one. Um, you can use it on board. Uh, and if you guys didn't know, we actually have an adapter. It's not a high low converter, just a physical RCA to high level speaker wire connector. It's actually called a KCE SP2K. That's what it looks like. Um, pretty nifty little thing. I bet nobody knows about it. Uh, check it out. If you need a couple, you know, in the bay, just order them. Uh, next to it is our inputs, six channels of inputs. They're labeled channel one through six. Um, generally speaking, you'd say the fronts are one and two, the rears are three and four, subs are five and six. Whatever you guys want to do, you can do. Uh, next to that is our outputs. There's six channels of output. Top row is positive. Bottom row is negative. Let's get this thing turned around so you can see the uh, controls. Now, there's a lot of control here, which really is uh, the shining point of this amplifier. I'm gonna go through it real quick and then we can talk about the applications after. But channels one and two, primarily meant for either a full range speaker or a tweeter. Um, it has the crossovers for bo both the lower high pass range and the upper high pass range. Uh, channels three and four are meant for a full range speaker or a mid range. So it has a either upper uh, low or sorry, a high pass at the bottom end as well as a low pass at the top end. And then channels five and six are meant for a either a full range again or a subwoofer. So it actually has a low pass at the bottom end. And on the end here, we have the input for the rux knob or a bass knob, which allows you to control the uh, bass level of the last two channels, fifth and sixth. So if they're bridged as a subwoofer, you can have bass control if you add that separate optional controller. Now, each pair of channels actually has an input selector. You can define um, each pair to have which, which input you want on the other end. So, for example, if you only have one set of inputs to run a full front active system, you can actually select each pair as channel 1, 2. So I'm only going to use one input for each of those channels. Now, if you have independent inputs, you can switch the middle ones to 3, 4, and the last ones to 5, 6. But it all lets you, you know, use it in both applications, like a 5-channel or a 6-channel. So it's pretty cool. So let's talk applications. This is a very versatile amp with tons of ways you can actually use it. The first one I want to talk about is a three-way active setup. Now, what does a three-way active setup look like? In the car, it usually looks like you have a mid-bass driver in the door, so a speaker in the door, a mid-range uh, speaker, a smaller, maybe three-inch or two-and-a-half-inch speaker up on the dash, and maybe a tweeter somewhere in the car. That's a three-way active system. You have three independent speakers playing a narrow range of sound um, so that you know each one can play them independently. Three on the left, three on the right, that's six channels. That's perfect application for a six channel amp. Now, how does that look like in aftermarket world? This is how I would set it up, and this is the way I have it in my Civic. Um, we start with a six and a half inch component set. Now, this can be a six and a half, it could be a six by nine component set, whatever the case is. This is actually an R-S65 C.2, which comes with a six and a half inch mid bass driver, as well as a tweeter and an inline filter. Uh, the inline filter is not going to be used in this setup. We're going to be managing all the frequencies directly off this amplifier. Now, the cool thing about this speaker, if you guys don't know this yet, um, because everything's in line, there's a low pass filter that's built into the speaker. Now, that may make you think, wait, how am I supposed to manage them off the amplifier if there is a built in crossover? There's actually a, a heat shrunk um, terminal uh, that is a bypass terminal. So if you actually remove the, the heat shrink tubing on there and connect to it you're actually bypassing that crossover to use it actively so absolutely capable of doing that so back to the application we have a tweeter we have a six and a half inch uh, mid bass driver and now we're going to introduce a three inch mid-range to this setup as well so this is actually a 30 mc um, this is a speaker we launched last year great mid-range driver very um, burly little uh, speaker it's a aluminum cast basket um, very large magnet here um, really good speaker for mid-ranges and it sounds phenomenal in my car so i would highly recommend it but this is kind of that speaker to um, round out this system um, here's the setup um, in my vehicle here's the setup here uh, we have our tweeter set up at 4000 hertz and up 
Um, we have our mid-range set in bandpass mode. Uh, the bottom end frequency is 350, 400. The upper end low pass frequency is at 4,000. Um, that's where the tweeter was crossed over. You get my, you get the point there. Um, the input switch is set to channels one, two, which means we're just using one signal for all of them. So input switch to one, two. Our mid bass driver is set at 350, 400 and down. Um, and the input switch on there is set to one, two also. So that's all the frequency ranges covered. Um, what I have in my car is actually a subwoofer amp and a 12 inch woofer um, hooked up as well uh, to really cover that bottom end base. That's crossed over at 65 down. Um, the six and a half inch speaker is probably not great at playing those bottom end frequencies. So the subwoofer kicks in for that purpose. Now this doesn't have a high pass filter at the bottom end. So what you'll have to do is use your head unit or a DSP to put that um, high pass filter on the bottom end of this mid-range driver. So next let's talk about the second most uh, common application for the six channel amp. Um, I'm going to put these back here. Um, the next application is actually five channel mode. Now five channel mode is probably one of the most common amplifiers out there right now. Uh, being able to run four speakers as well as a subwoofer. In our application we're going to be using this little guy. Uh, this is actually an R-series coaxial speaker. It's a full range speaker. It plays um, anywhere from 65 hertz all the way up to 20K. All on its own. Um, really great speaker to play a full range. Very simple system. So in, that, in the five channel setup with this amplifier, what you would see is one of these speakers, so you'd buy basically two pairs of these. Um, they would go front left door, front right door, rear left uh, door, rear right door, and then you'd have a subwoofer in the back. Now let's see what the setup looks like. So here's the controls. Um, you can see channels one, two will be our fronts and it's actually in basically full range mode. We're doing a high pass at the bottom end to protect it. So it's at about 80 Hertz and up. The fronts are set up that way, channels one and two. Channels three and four are set up just exactly the same. So it's actually high pass at 80 Hertz. And then fifth and sixth channels are bridged. So we're actually using the positive of channel five, the negative of channel six to run to that subwoofer. Um, it's at four ohms. So it's actually the Ardash W12D2 uh, ran in parallel, or sorry, ran in series, which will give us four ohm. Um, that is being managed by the fifth and sixth channel here. And that's set to 80 and down. So that's probably your most common system with the six channel running in five channel mode. So those are the two most common setups, the six channel three-way active system, as well as the five channel uh, mode. Um, another six channel mode, which is pretty clever, is actually using it like a four channel. So what you're gonna do is a two-way active setup up front and then use the middle channels, channel three and four for rear fill. Um, so what you would end up doing, it looks like this. Uh, you would use your channels one and two to run a tweeter. You'd use your channels three and four just for the rear fill and you'd use channel five and six for the mid bass because it's a lot more power, which gives you a lot more mid bass at the bottom end. Um, that's another clever way of using it um, in six channel mode. The next setup you can do is actually a four channel mode. So you can actually bridge channels one, two, you bridge channels three, four, and then you use independent five and six. What that gives you is a really, really powerful four channel amp. That's 200 by two and 150 by two. Uh, so, for example, if you're running it in a, in a boat or a side-by-side -side where you need a lot of power, um, that amplifier can do that for channel mode. The next application is actually a three-way mode. So you bridge channels one and two, you bridge channels three and four, and then you bridge channels three, uh, five and six. So you have uh, basically a 200 by two um, and then a 500 by one. So if you have a very small vehicle and you only want, want full range loudspeakers up front, as well as a subwoofer, three channel mode uh, will do you well there. So those are the applications. There's probably more that I haven't covered, but those are probably the most common. I think really the cool thing about this amp um, is the idea of one amp doing all those things for you. And there's something that we use internally, what we call the upgrade path. Um, and what that basically means is a customer can start out their system with a basic five channel mode, right? So they can buy this six channel, use it in five channel mode, have a simple setup, four speakers and a sub. 
Down the road, if they're interested in getting a more advanced setup like a two-way active or a three-way active, they wouldn't have to get rid of the, this amp. They can actually just reconfigure it to power a more robust system and maybe add another amplifier to run the sub. So this amp can stay with you for a long time and power a ton of systems uh, because of its versatility. So the last couple things I want to talk about with this amp, um, high resolution capable, um, as well as our other four channel amp, they're all high res compatible. The speakers um, can go up to 45 kilohertz as well. So the entire R series family is high res compatible. And now we have a multi-channel amp as well as a four channel and a mono that work perfectly well with our speakers and our subwoofer within the family of R series product. Thanks for joining us on our first episode of What's New To Goo. If you like this video, be sure to like Alpine To Goo on Facebook, add some comment, if you have any follow-up questions to anything we talked about today, add them to the comment block. Let me know if there's anything you want to see in the future. Um, stay safe out there. Tune in next time for what's new.